Cannon Hub, straight until morning hub, all along rating. Plus 27 Foundation Orbital Research Compound 5, Meeting Room A. July 12, 1973, 2315 hours GMT. Dr. Marco, testing with SCP-3203 is to be halted for the foreseeable future. The man at the head of the table pointed at a list of names on the projection slide. We have lost 3D class in the past year. That number is far beyond projected losses. It's beyond acceptable losses as well. Dr. Marco, a brown-haired balding man in his mid-forties spoke up, Director Cooper, three deaths in a year is next to nothing. Even at the celebrated casualty rate, we could afford to continue our experiments for another five years before acquiring more specimens. Director Cooper shook his head. My point here was that no loss of life is acceptable. These are human beings we're charged with, not specimens. Of course, they face an elevated risk of death through the very nature of our testing, but it's your job to reduce the loss of life to a minimum. I'm cancelling all testing on your 3203 project because you have not been doing your job. Dr. Marco shifted uncomfortably in his seat. Furthermore, Dr. Cooper continued, I am placing you up for a review with the Ethics Committee. There is no excuse for D-1034 D-3402's death except your own incompetence, negligence, or willful disregard for safety protocols. Now wait just a minute, Dr. Marco interrupted again, I was doing my job. That is patently untrue, and this isn't up for discussion. Consider yourself on an indefinite suspension until we unravel your mess. Director Cooper motioned to one of several armed men standing in the back of the meeting room, Agent Pulaski, if you don't mind. A burly barrel-chested man stepped forward and placed his hand on Dr. Marco's shoulder. Dr. Marco slumped in his seat just a moment before rising and following the large man out of the room. Nubis, muttered another man further down the table. Foundation Orbital Research Compound 5, D, 1153's holding cell. July 12, 1973, 2356 hours GMT. There's got to be some kind of way out of here, Jacob Maxwell said to the ventilation duct. Look, came a muffled reply from the next room, I've been stuck up here for almost two years now and I ain't found one. You should just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. Tommy, are you out of your goddamn mind? Tommy's voice carried over from the next cell. You get to serve your country. You get three squares a day and a view to die for. I'm a fucking computer science major who got caught calling in a bomb threat to get out of a fucking test. Three meals a day and a place to sleep isn't how I expected to spend the rest of my life. You think I thought I'd end up a million miles from home for stealing cars? You ain't gonna change things by complaining about it. It's like I said, just sit back and enjoy your new life as a fucking astronaut. What the fuck do you know about living a life? Jacob thought.
but didn't ask. He settled down on his bed and looked out the window. Thomas wasn't wrong, the view of the earth from up here was spectacular. He could recognize the faint the coastline of Southeast Asia, and he followed the contours of the coast up. He couldn't see the Great Wall of China from here. He'd always thought he'd be able to see it, but there was nothing noticeable there. Maybe he had to be closer. Jacob leaned further towards the window when it happened. He took just a moment to blink, and when he opened his eyes another, stranger, world appeared in front of his eyes. What the fuck? Jacob yelled. Tommy, something just happened to Earth. Look, the muffled voice answered back, I don't need your bullshit right now, it's fucking late and I'm tired. Tommy I'm not fucking joking. Foundation Orbital Research Compound 5, Director Cooper's Office. July 13, 1973, 0004 hours GMT. A loud beep stirred Cooper from the reports in front of him. He pressed a button on his desk and heard a panicked voice on the other end. Director. There's something wrong. Cooper's survival instincts kicked in. He went through his mental checklist. The life support system, the artificial gravity, the health wrecked. His mind blanked as he rose and looked out his window of the alien world is station now orbited. Son of a bitch, he said that loud, Caitlin, I want you to stay at calm and pass an order to all active officers and agents to meet me in the command and control center. This is not a drill. Yes sir, came a short reply from his assistant, who only wavered for a moment before relaying the orders. Foundation Orbital Research Compound 5, Keck. July 13, 1973, 0015 hours GMT. 3065 and 3132 are fully contained. They wouldn't be capable of this level of reality shift anyway, Agent Forrester said from the back row. Director Cooper placed pushed his glasses further up his nose. Well something to this. Is the planet still silent? As far as we know, the communication officer, Jessica Metis spoke up, it's possible someone's down there and they're taking a few minutes to figure out how